Hey guys, it's Vince. Today in this video, we're going to be discussing a question that comes up actually quite frequently. It's actually been coming up at least three times a week, and that is, how do I perform close proximity soldering? Um, and in this demonstration that I have mocked up here, I've got my 16-4 double shielded cable. I've got the shield drain already pre-tinned. I've got the cable end already cleaned up and everything is all set here. This is just, these leads are just to demonstrate how we're going to perform this operation. Now, uh, I've done close proximity soldering. It's pretty much inevitable to do whenever you're assembling cables. We've seen it done on circuit boards, but there's really never been, at least that I've seen, a video done on dealing with uh, close proximity soldering, dealing with shield drains and uh, cables in general. So what I wanted to do is break that down for you in a short video. I'm also going to cover another topic that comes up, and that is crimp connectors and adding solder to a crimp connector, because a lot of guys feel that that's not possible and they have a lot of different feelings on it. Well, I'm going to cover that too. We'll do a mock-up and go through that. So what I've got here, once again, is my 16-4 double shielded cable. Shield drain is pre tin Now, I actually have a shield drain from my cable. It is 16 gauge. The shield drain is the same gauge as the actual conductors inside the cable. And what you'll notice is when this is properly soldered, you will see that all conductors become one because the solder merges all of the conductors, welds them all together, and that's what you should see. A lot of times I see videos where a guy will take, either, even with flux, take the soldering iron and just apply it and kind of brush the iron over and think that he soldered something. That's not soldering, guys. You will have problems with that over the long term if we are not getting a conductor that looks like this. So the biggest question is, how do we solder this shield drain without making contact or melting any of the PVC casing around it? Well, here's a real simple way to do that. This is my double wall heat shrink. You can buy this anywhere. This particular heat shrink is actually uh, adhesive lined. That's very common. What I did was where the bend is in the heat shrink, I simply cut it off so that the bend is now available for us to apply to the actual lead that we want to insulate. And what we're trying to do is diffuse heat. And why do I choose heat shrink? Heat shrink has a very high temperature rating. Okay, and by me applying that, just like I did right there over the, the ground drain, or excuse me, the ground lead, we know, and actually around in between the ground drain, what we're able to do is diffuse heat because the heat shrink has a much higher temperature rating than the PVC casing in terms of it going to be a polymer and shrink. So we're golden there. Now what we want to do by doing that is it gives us ample time to apply heat and, and our flux as well and give us a perfect weld. And I'm going to show you that done in real time. So here's what we've got. We've got our Kester 186. Of course, you know this is my go-to flux. Uh, very simple. We're going to saturate the component now. You see right here we've got full penetration. You can see where the, the flux is still in place. And again, got a UI995D+. We're going to come over here. And you can place this any way you like. I get a lot of guys that ask me, you know, do I use helping hands? Most of my projects, I don't. Um, I still got my stay puts if I'm doing precision work where I'm applying ring connectors on the end, then I will use my stay puts. But in general, I like good flux saturation. A lot of guys only apply it once. I'll apply it two or three times because I want it soaked. And you can see when it's soaked. But what we're going for is a nice, smooth weld. Come over here, make sure we get some solder on the tip. We do our carryover method. See, we've got a nice bulb and we're just going to apply heat. That's the right amount of heat, and you will see your weld is complete. Now, if you get an end, and I get this a lot too, what if I get an end on the solder joint that doesn't look smooth? Well, the beauty of using flux is it's going to level your solder. So even if you apply it again, leave it a little bit on there. Now I'm going to solder, and I'm a little lucky in the sense that I'm, I'm ambidextrous. I've practiced for years doing this, and I can come over here lefty, with the gun and you see I'm just leaving it and look nothing is happening but if you look at that well and I remove the heat shrink and of course this has adhesive you can see what happens it actually trapped the flux if we look at this I'm going to clean it together and check it out you can see we're left with a beautiful joint you can see that right there. 
that saw is a lock. Okay, and best of all, we bend this up. You can see our conductors are perfect. There's not a mark anywhere. So again, very easy to do, and professional results are simple to achieve. Now, why do we use silicone? Well, look at this. You try doing this with a 16 gauge shield drain and it's solid like this and it's just not doing anything. You're, you're going to have all kinds of problems. Much more durable, very easy to do and that weld is never going anywhere. That's a perfect weld, you can see the seam, it's absolutely right and we're golden. You can see what we could do with our silicone. Now, looking at the cable end, you can also see, and this is something I get asked too, you see no exterior tin braided copper exposed. When you're working with shielded cable, the biggest thing you want to pay very close attention to for safety is making sure that all of your tin braided copper and mylar foil is embedded in the PVC casing because we want to avoid it ever creeping out, potentially poking into our exterior PVC casing of the leads and also potentially making contact with conductors which are carrying power. If a ground actually makes uh, contact with a conductor, you would have what's known as a dead short and that could be catastrophic in terms of fire injury or potential death. So again, what I'm telling you here and showing you, this is a real deal. You can see exactly what we've got there and the cable is finished. Now, let's move over to another area. And this is a great one because this is really great to illustrate. This is a crimp connector. It's done perfectly. You can see here we've got our crimp in there. We've got our conductors inside here. You can see how they're all non-bound. If we flex this, and this is why I'm not fond of crimp connectors, look at this. Okay, now let me show you something. This is really interesting. Watch what happens. This is crimped. This is crimped with the crimping tool. You can see it was done perfectly. Look at the, the pressure on it's perfectly, it's even. Watch what happens when I pull a little bit, watch. I'm sure she can see that on the camera. You can see that, yes? Yeah. Okay, so if you can see that, what we're gonna do now is this is number one reason why I'm not a fan of crimp connectors. Now I say, I know some guys will say, well, oh no, that's not every crimp connector, that's not this and that. It scares me to think that this was done with the crimp tool properly. It's totally symmetrical in form. The connector looks perfect. Everything there is correctly done. And I've had end users tell me that. I've done everything correct as to the instructions on the tool itself, and that's what happens. Now, mind you, if this is connected to a VFD and there's slight tension on that cable over time, you could get that separation and that could be catastrophic. So a real easy fix. I'm gonna lock, lock her into the device right here. Do this carefully. I'm just gonna come out and show you how fast this is to fix. Just lock it in. You're gonna apply some flux to your seam, right on your seam, okay? And we'll let that go in. And you see right there our flux, and that's why I love the caster. You can see it's floating in. Once we let our iron reach temperature again, that's the other thing. If you have a soldering station or whatever soldering iron you're using, if it goes into sleep mode, you want to make sure that the iron reaches temperature prior to applying solder. A lot of guys are in a rush. There is no such thing as rushing if you're trying to get the job correctly done. We want full penetration with our solder, and what's gonna happen is once we apply heat to the top of this conductor, we're gonna apply the heat with the solder, and the solder through capillary action and heat will be sucked into where the flux is penetrated and made contact with the conductor formulating a bond and that's the well we're looking to get. So we're at 800 right now. Come in, do our carryover method. We're just gonna apply a drop. That's beautiful. And we're gonna come over here very simple and watch what happens. As we apply heat, you notice I'm staying away from the actual PVC and we're done. And that right there is how we do a solder connection. Now we let the PVC naturally cool down under its own accord. And you can see that's a weld and everything is done. Now we'll clean this again. And that's totally up to you. Now Kester, it's 186, so it's an RMA flux. It does not require cleaning. I like to clean, I use my cotton swabs, and of course you can tell I'm using real high dollar swabs here. They're just Q-tips. Um, and you can see that's bonded, that leads all those conductors perfectly. You can see that, and now that's done. That ain't going anywhere. And again, very simple to do, and you get the best of both worlds. If you want to crimp, I also recommend soldering, and I've just shown you why I recommend it. Because a lot of guys don't think about that over time. They're like, oh, it feels good, it feels good. Over time, 
you want to be certain that what you're doing is correct and is not going to give you any trouble. And this, I can guarantee you, will last the long haul. Especially, you can see, um, I'm hoping she can catch this on camera, the penetration of the solder is all the way through. You can see the seam edge, and you can see inside there those conductors are one. And that's exactly what we want. Okay? A lot of guys feel that if you leave heat on here, they're going to melt the PVC casing. If the cable is done correctly, and you keep your solder as far over as possible, keep your solder on this end, you're going to be fine because the heat's still got to travel all the way up the conductor and then all the way to the PVC case and cause any potential damage. So you're golden. You can see right here you're done. You can see how solid this connector is now. Much more solid and, and definitely not nearly as flimsy and that's exactly what we're looking for. Finished product like this and like I said safety then is no longer an issue. So again, guys, um, I hope that this video has been helpful. I hope that it's answered a lot of your questions. Um, you can tell I spend a lot of time doing this. I mean, this is not something that I take lightly because safety needs to be correct. This naturally gets heat shrink over, and you can see here, this is a solid, and I mean a solid lead. It's not going anywhere, and you still have maximum flexibility. So again, if you guys have any questions, I know videos always generate more questions, please, by all means, um, message me direct at storm2313 at gmail.com. I'll, I'll do my best to uh, naturally accommodate you. Um, if you guys uh, require quotes, again, send uh, the messages to the same email. Or you can message me direct on my eBay uh, store at the dealers direct. Uh, to all my subscribers, I love you guys. I know many of you have had these questions. I'm trying to answer as many of these as possible. My next video is probably going to be something to deal with solder iron um, actual uh, uh, rejuvenation, I'll put it that way, or uh, cleanliness. This iron has well over 200 hours on it. The barrel on it is stainless steel. After about every three hours use, it's polished and clean. And you can see here, this unit is brand new. Okay, This thing performs amazing, and the biggest reason soldering irons fail, many of you already know, and if you don't know, it's due to carbon buildup. They start losing temperature and can't hold temperature correctly. And it's mainly due to poor maintenance. Well, I'd like to show you my process on what I do. And again, this iron, well over 200 hours on it. And it looks like new and performs like new. The only thing I do is change the tips. Uh, I use the auto tip cleaner, metal brushes, which will polish them out. And you can see the tip works perfect. Um, again, it's the easiest way to increase longevity of your tools and to make sure, of course, that we're doing things properly. So again, that'll definitely be in the next following video, one of the next following videos. Once again, I thank you all for your support. Take care.